With another delay of the jungle update on TF2, we can assume that the TF2 team is trying their best to have some sort of quality control the next time the update rolls out. But even so, quality assurance cannot guarantee an actual good update because there is a variable known as the TF2 player base, which is a lot. And anything can happen in these updates because there's also multiple game modes and other variables that can affect the game that the TF2 team cannot foresee. And with the prominence of major YouTube uh, TF2 players, uh, we can always assume that there will be a video that will showcase the worst of the update and claim that Valve does not have any quality assurance whatsoever. Things like glitches and exploits will always be abused and monetized. I'm not going to talk about those kinds of uh, videos uh, because Medic Excalibur 2012 has already made a great video discussing the problems with that and how whatever I'll leave a link to it in the description and put an annotation right here but instead I will talk about uh, the different kind of TF2 youtuber who instead likes to bash on the TF2 team or Valve for not giving the quality assurance that a large corporation can ensure on a on a game like TF2 which has a large player base and is one of the major games only topped by Counter-Strike and Dota 2. And there's a lot of YouTubers out there who like to do this kind of thing and monetize on the issues, not directly but indirectly, and talk about how Valve needs to step up their game or they need to uh, make sure that the product comes out correctly and all that stuff. Stuff that's kind of outlandish, I mean, not really, because Valve is a large corporation and I see where they're coming from, but they don't know the entire truth and the entire reason behind why the TF2 team allows these sort of things to happen. All right, It's not their control because in fact Valve does not uh, work the same way as a traditional gaming company. We all know this, we all know the Valve uh, corporate, uh, I don't know how to say this, system. Which you know if you don't, here's a sum up. Uh, Valve does not assign people to do jobs, instead what they do is they allow the employees to roll their desk over to whatever game they want to work on. And this kind of leads to problems with games like TF2, especially older games, because uh, when something new comes out like the Oculus Rift, everybody in that department is going to want to switch over to o the Oculus Rift and test it out and code for it and try it all these try out all these uh, new, super cool, awesome, you know, futuristic shit. So back on the whole YouTubers bashing Valve for uh, their quality assurance or the lack of quality assurance, uh, a lot of major YouTubers, usually anytime a big update rolls out and there's a bunch of problems that uh, occur, like Meet Your Match, which is one of the most recent ones that caused a lot of problems with a lot of people because of long loading times and how matchmaking was pretty much broken, competitive matchmaking was also pretty much broken. Uh, wh uh, a lot of big YouTubers uh, really got onto the bandwagon and talked about how bad it was and how Valve, like I said, needs to get their shit together. Uh, and one of the most annoying things that they usually say is they always refer to the TF2 team as a Valve. As if the majority of Valve or most of Valve uh, works on TF2, which is totally wrong, alright? Uh, with a game like Team Fortress 2 that was first a major game release, one that cost $30 and then turned into a free-to-play game that is mostly kept alive by the community, uh, TF2 does not have that big of a uh, team. Instead, they have a ragtag of individuals who actually have a passion for this game, and they work tirelessly every single day in order to bring us this, these uh, new updates, like the Jungle update and the Meet Your Match update. Uh, they were all in good faith. They, they all had some sort of uh, passion towards these updates. They didn't just slack off. But it is the fact that there's only a few of them that caused a giant uh, problem with the Meet Your Match rollout. Now you may be wondering how many people actually are working on TF2? I mean, there's got to be like at least a couple, and yes there is, there's a pretty medium sized team. I wouldn't say as far as to say that they're indie, but maybe the size of some sort of 
B-rate uh, video game studio, one that makes good quality games, but not the AAA that you would think. Now, according to German Peter, there are approximately 11 people working on TF2 or have worked in TF2 maybe around the time of Meet Your Match. And, you know, that's a pretty big team, but here's the catch. Not all of them are programmers, alright? Some of them are artists, writers, level designers, and sound engineers, alright? Uh, there's only around four programmers who actively work on TF2, which includes Jill the, uh, you know, the spokesman of TF2 when it comes to coding. And these four people have to work tirelessly every day and night in order to bring out a huge update on code that is probably over a decade and a half old. Alright, TF2 wasn't just in development for like a couple of years, instead it was in development ever since 1990... I'll put the year up here. And they have to work this much with only four people actually doing the code. And who's to say that they're professionals? Sure, they may be working on Valve, but they probably can't fix everything by themselves. Not to mention that Q QA testers, quality assurance testers that most new games have, are pretty much non-existent in the TF2 team. Instead, it's those programmers and those people who are in the TF2 team as a whole uh, who test out? Who are the ones who test out the game in order to make sure that the update is working? And once again, they can't factor in variables that they can't control, such as player number, uh, how it would work on an online setting. They probably have their own servers at their uh, own offices that they work on privately, aside from the public release of TF2. So for them to be able to look at every single bug and every single exploit is pretty much an impossible task that can't be done by these four people, or eleven people. And so now you know that whenever anybody in the YouTube TF2 community uh, says that Valve needs to, you know, fix the game and make sure that the updates come out uh, well and fixed, it irks me really, really badly because these people don't take into account that the TF2 team is really small. And big YouTubers always say this kind of thing. Alright, Mooselk, Nissalt, and even After Breakfast, a channel that I really, really like better more than those other two, uh, say the same thing, that it's Valve, but as, but as in a whole, not the uh, fact that it's just a small TF2 team of around four programmers. For the very first time, we've been let down by Valve, and we have not received a major update in at least 365 days, which is quite a length of time. 200 hours of this game and 2,200 of those hours were all played casually. They were played with the intention of having fun. So I'm gonna to try to tell all of you casual players out there like me what you should know and what's fun about the game and whether or not you should feel the doom and gloom from the shitstorm that Valve has put upon us. I'm gonna tackle the biggest problem with this fucking update and that's that the game just doesn't fucking work. There's also this weird mentality in the TF2 community that we always get at times like this, where people say it's somehow wrong to complain and that we're being ungrateful and that we should apologize to Valve for not kissing their butts when they make changes which are just universally bad for the game. Guys, for the past three or four years now, Valve has consistently let TF2 players down with almost every single update and I'm done giving Valve the benefit of the doubt and I'm done pretending that the way they're treating TF2 is okay. This kind of misinformation can cause some real damage to the TF2 community making it more toxic because it misinforms those who are uninformed and uh, causes a weird hatred towards the TF2 team. All right, They're already under so much stress trying to make an update that is you know new and fresh and can do a lot to improving TF2's image, a game that they so deeply care about, otherwise they would be working on Half-Life 3 instead, okay? Alright, they, they don't need this additional stress, okay, from the community, uh, you know, because let's hope to God that they don't uh, rely on uh, acceptance. I bet you that the TF2 team is very strong for doing this for so long, for so many years, you know, pushing out two updates with only four programmers and a ragtag team of uh, designers and stuff, right? They're, they've been doing such a great job and I hope this is only gonna get better. Hopefully once Half-Life 3 comes out and, uh, you know, uh, Steam VR 
is finished with, uh, people will return to TF2, or at least maybe a couple of new people will continue to support TF2. Uh, but until then, we're gonna have to put up, uh, not put up, alright, that just sounds horrible. We're gonna have to, uh, be glad and, uh, grateful for the things that the small TF2 team has given us so far, alright? Uh, you know, just make sure to know this, okay? Alright, so look, all I'm gonna say is cut the TF2 team some slack, alright? They're trying their best. They're only four people. You really wanna help the TF2 community? Don't just complain about the problem. Go to college, get a degree in computer science, learn how to code, go and try to work at Valve and fix the game yourself. Alright, maybe then you'll actually learn some empathy, and especially when the TF2 community starts saying how much of a bad team you guys are because you can't send out an update for a big game with a lot of content, a lot of code, correctly on day one. Alright, that's all I'm gonna say right now. Thank you for watching. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Comment down below other YouTubers who have done the same mistake and, uh, you know, tell them that, you know, to cut them some slack. Make sure that, uh, you know, they understand that there's only four people working on the game. You know, don't bite the hand that feeds you. Alright.